Good morning, every medical student. Our lecture will be imaging of the chest. And uh, I will show you the normal radiological anatomy of this lecture. So, as a beginning, I will show you some of the modalities of the chest, the commonly used modalities of the chest. Firstly, we commonly use chest X-ray, which is available in all our hospitals and in some of the K, uh, of some of the primary healthcare centers. We have CT of the chest, just to know, because we you are going to be the 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 future doctors in the near future, and we have to know that CT scan they. It is available in as a teaching hospital. We have two CT scan. We have two CT scan in Barushke Emergency Hospital, Surgical Emergency Hospital. We have also CT scan in Zaho Hospital in and in Akre Hospital, Bulan uh, Hospital. So and ultrasound they are available in all hospitals and some of the primary health care centers. And uh, Nuclear, as an example, positron emission tomography CT scan. It is uh, unfortunately not available in our city. It's available in Erbil and Suleimania recently. So for the chest X-ray, we commonly use frontal radiograph. So frontal chest X-ray, either it's PA view, which is commonly used, or it's AP view. And some cases we use lateral X-ray for localization of the lesions and to sometimes to exclude any artifacts which is, can be seen on the frontal radiograph or the, in the pocket of the patient. So, so these are problem solving. And, and commonly, this is in the cubitals. We use it before and now a day after emergence of ultrasound, we very uncommonly used. The difference between the PA view and the AP view is from the source of the X-ray, which is from the tube of the X-ray. Uh, as you see, this is the tube. So in the PA view, which is commonly used and standardly used in erect position, the X-ray beam is coming from, this, from the tube and hit the posterior part of the patient to pass through the patient and get the cassette here. So the distance here from the source till the cassette is about 1.8 uh, cent, uh, one, uh, 180 centimeters. So it's 1.8 meters. And while in the AP view, we use it for an ambulatory patients. They are critically ill, we cannot stand. So we, uh, we make PA view, uh, AP view, this is the source of the X-ray and pass to the cassette here. So, and the distance here is about one, one meter. And the X-ray beam will hit the anterior part of the patient. That's why it's called AP view. But we have some problem here for magnification of the cardiac cell health. Sometimes for problem solving or the colorization of the lesion, we have lateral position, we have right on left lateral position according to the uh, lesion area of interest. So in this case, we have left lateral position. Uh, this is the cassette. So we will get lateral position. So example, and here we have uh, a lesion in the right lower zone. So we want to localize is this in the anterior posterior and there is no structure to or to know from the seal hood sign to know is it in, in the anterior or in the posterior. So in this case, it's in the middle. The cubitals, we put the cassette here in the front of the patients, and this is the source of this zone, the zone, the beam. So the beam is coming from the source and hit the cassette, pass it through. We usually use this one. We will use it for to exclude is it this, if it is a frontal radiograph and there is pleural effusion will give you a meniscal sign. But this pleural effusion, is it loculated? Is it a complex one or it is just 
a simple pleural effusion. So by gravity, in the lateral decubitus, they will be filling in the region of the dependent part. So we know that the amount of the, of the fluid and also know is it simple or not. If it is a complex one, it will be still, it will keep its size and volume. This is the frontal guard graph. We pass through the ABCDEF system according to our practical sessions. So we have airway A, we have bone and soft tissue for B, and C, cardiac, seal hood, and the mediastinum. We have D, diaphragm, and right diaphragm, hemidiaphragm, and left hemidiaphragm, gastric bubbles assessment, which is located in the left side for assessment of the pleural effusion and the, the fields of the lung. So, so here, for example, for A, this is the bronchi. The main bronchus then it become right and left. This assessment. And B for the bones. So we have mainly the, we have ribs, we have clavicle, scapula, and head of the humerus. For the ribs, for the normal chest X-ray and inspiratory, uh, which is the, the we, 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 most of the cases we use inspiratory, we have to see at least about six ribs uh, to be seen in the frontal guard graph. For example, this, this is the fairest one, the sixth one, the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth and the fifth and the sixth one. So the mid axillary line, it is about six. So this is a dependent uh, X-ray. And if we, as we know that the anterior ribs, they are more steeper and the posterior, they are more horizontal. Example, we have to see the posterior ribs about 10 ribs, starting from the first rib, the second rib, third rib, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, so these are nine to 11 ribs in the posterior part. And we have to know that are more horizontal. C, cardiac seal hooting. So we, this is the, and the mediastinum. So we have to assess the cardiac size and the mediastinal any angulation, for example, in left adenopathy. And D for the right hemidiaphragm and left hemidiaphragm for gastric bubbles. And usually, this is uh, to assess whether it's situs and versa. For example, you'll see gastric bubbles here. And air under the arm. We have E for pleural effusion. So usually, it gives you meniscal sign, and in the costophrenic alveol, it will be blunted. And F, we have two lung fields to assess the lung fields and for any interstitial lung disease, any metastasis, any mass lesion. So these are important, just pneumonatic to assess whole, and we have not to forget the hidden area also. So these are hidden area, which is retrocardiac, and below the, around the diaphragm, or below the diaphragm, retrocardiac, you will see it here, the hilar regions and the apices, so they are, hidden area, we have to check it again. And when you finish your list of the check, uh, list of the checklist. Uh, as we know, in the right side, we have right upper lobe. Right upper lobe is give you this area, occupy this area of the colored one. This is the right lower lobe. And also the right middle lobe, so it's according to the transverse fissures, the oblique fissure, the major fissure, and the transverse one. So the middle lobes is located anteriorly in the lower part, and it's just below the minor fissure. And the major fissure divides the upper and left. So this is, these are important concepts. In the left side, it's occupied most of the light fields, left upper lobe. And also we have the flower loop and including the lingula, which is located in the anterior. So these colors give you the occupying 
the loops that occupy the zones. So this is the right upper loop, middle, uh, middle loop, and lower loop. Right upper loop, middle, uh, lower loop, left lower loop, uh, left upper loop, and lingula is located in the side. We have lateral, right lateral position of right upper loop, right lower loop, and the middle loop. While in the left side, we have left upper and left lower and localize here. So to make, to localize the, any lesion on the chest X-ray, we have to have zones and to make it simple because assessment of the loops on the chest X-ray in two dimensions is difficult. So any lesion located above the, in the PA view, above the clavicles, these are the apices or the apical zones. Some of them mention only three zones, upper zone. Any lesion above the second, the, the second rib is upper loop and from the second to the uh, fourth, is middle zone and regarding the anterior ribs and any lesion below the fourth rib to sixth rib is lower zone. So to make it simple, uh, we have divisions of zones. So any lesion located here, they are apical, locate, apical right apex, uh, apex, or we have right upper loop also. We have middle loop. Uh, middle zone, we have lower zone. The second modality is the chest, C scan of the chest. So the C scan of the chest, there are some indications that we not commonly, we are not usually use the CT scan for assessment of the chest. So first, we, we have scanogram we will put the patient here on the table and this the, the scan area here so we first just make and just like x-ray it is called scanogram it will give you the area and make the area of interest so if you are going to scan from the upper the chest is you will scan from here you will localize this region until here including the adrenal glands which are a part of the examination of the chest so if you want to scan the abdomen, for example, you will scan it from here above the diaphragm until the pelvis or including the pelvis according to the region of interest. There are some indication for using CT scan. We don't use CT scan because of radiation hazards. So to, these are some of the, of the indications to assess the equivocal plain X-ray findings for staging of the lung, neoplasm, for metastasis workup, and for extrathoracic malignancies. To diagnose a diffuse lung disease and interstitial lung disease, we use high resolution CT scan, it's usually non contrast. We assess the bronchiectasis and the localization of the bronchiectasis, the size and the volume. We assess the suspected post traumatic complication like. The vascular injuries, the parenchymal injuries, fractures, and um, for example, pulmonary hemorrhage, pneumothorax, we can use CT scan for such complicated cases. We also diagnose a mediastinal and chest wall lesion. They are very important to assess the mediastinum uh, very accurately. Or also diagnose of suspected pulmonary embolism by giving contrast, so angiography, pulmonary angiography, or exclusion of pulmonary embolism, especially acute cases. So these are the shapes of the, the CT scan, ordinary CT scan. So the table is here, and the detectors and the tubes are located inside. So the tube is just the tube of x-ray, and these are the detector, and the beam will pass through the patients, and there will be a rotation uh, of the of the both parts together simultaneously, the tubes and the detector. We some of the cases we use scanogram, a contrast agent. Usually we use 50 to 100 
cc of the contrast of water soluble contrast um, but roughly we use about one cc per kg for example if the patient is 70 kilogram we use 70 cc just uh, but we can use up to two cc we we don't use usually the contrast for evaluation of lung diseases for diffuse lung diseases like testicular lung disease and also we don't use it in bronchiectasis testis or screening of the lung metastasis we don't use it and some cases of trauma we don't use this contrast when there is no risk no um, risk or there is no suspicion for vascular injuries and also sometimes we use ct scan for high risk patient screening for ca bronchus we when we scan the patients then it is a computed one so we can choose the mediastinal window the line window the bone window according to the nodes for example if you want to assess the mediastinal window for you you will choose the mediastinal window for soft tissue and the mediastinum also and the vas the vessels and if you want to assess the parenchyma we use line window and if you assess to you want to assess the bone we use bone window so these are three windows but we can change manipulate according to the link we we call it link level and link uh, window level and uh, uh, window uh, we uh, window sorry uh, window width and uh, link level we have a mediastinal window for example in this case we we have aortic arch when you scan through the aortic arch here this is the slice pass through the aortic arch so it give you this slice and if you go above it will give you the branch of aortic arch aorta, uh, the arch of the aorta so it will give you the brachiocephaly for example here and left common and uh, common carotid artery and also subclavian left subclavian artery so if you go up more up it will give you more branchings and you will give this slice is according to the area of interest so by multiple slices you will get many sli uh, many uh, slice of of the mediastinum starting from above starting uh, from above to below example here this the structure the main pulmonary trunk and the right which is in your left side and left pulmonary artery these are structure very important and crucial for assessment of pulmonary impulse and also for traumatic patients to assess the ascending aorta and descending out aorta and also cases of dissection of aorta so if you go down sorry if you go down you will get this section and until you get the heart and these are the chambers of so these are some of the important structures that you are going to get it from this one slice of the ct scan of the chest is ascending aorta and descending aorta and main pulmonary artery and right and left pulmonary artery we have this svc superior vena cava we have esophagus and right and left main bronchus we have uh, a zygous vein and also we have descending aorta here so these structures are very crucial especially for interventional radiologists when he's going to do ct guided biopsies so we have have aware about all these structures and i forget to tell you about the internal uh, thoracic artery or mammary arteries or and vessels so the vein is in the medial side and the artery in the lateral side we have mediastinal lymph node in a mediastinal window so there are multiple levels of the lymph nodes according to the site so you commonly the carinal and hilar lymph nodes and prevascular lymph nodes retrosternal all these are important for assessment and sometimes for staging of uh, diseases like lymphoma and metastasis 
Lefadi Park is a common abnormality, and there are many causes behind the Lefadi Party, and it occurs in any or all the media sign compartments, maybe in the anterior, posterior, or the, the, the middle, or the superior. So, so there are uh, lymph nodes, they are located here, uh, every part. Normal nodes usually are not seen on imaging, but if they are seen on sub-centimetry, you, you may see it, but there are some features, for example, there are some fats inside the hilum preserved, and the lymph nodes, they are elliptical, so they are reactive lymph nodes. Enlarged lymph nodes can be seen in a primary uh, diseases like lymphoma and leukemia, but it can be seen in secondaries from primary malignancies. For example, if metastasis from the CA stoma, colon, or any other uh, primary uh, malignancies like CA breast, for example. Some of the infections give you lymphadenopathy, like TB, for example, there are some features that you will see it in TB, especially if there are necrotic centers, just like um, seen in sickle cell carcinoma metastasis. And also there are some diseases like lymphoid hyperplasia in Castleman disease. You may see lymphadenopathy. As I mentioned, suprarenal glands or adrenal glands, this is a part of the scanning. So this is, so this is the, the adrenal gland here, the lymphs of the adrenal gland. And this is the eye, this this is the IVC. This is the IVC. So and this is the left adrenal gland. So in this case, you see this is the mass lesion in the right adrenal gland. Adrenal gland is a part of the chest CT scan. And this is a normal adrenal right adrenal gland. It's, these are two limbs, it's just like Y shape, and these are the limbs of the left adrenal gland. So by media signal window, we can assess soft tissue and muscles. You can assess, for example, here is a right pectoralis muscle. It's a major and this is a minor. And also uh, we, you, we assess the vessels. And these are, for example, the uh, infra clav, uh, infra scapularis, suprascapularis we can use and subscapularis. Lung loops, we use lung window or pulmonary window for assessment of the parenchyma. We assess all the air, for example, this is the bronchi and any pneumothorax, you can see it just like seen in trachea, the cell black color, you will see it here, for example. So the lung window is essential for assessment of the lung diseases, especially interstitial lung disease and deposits. The, we have lung anatomy in the CT, just like seen in the X-ray, but in 3D dimension. And this is the major fissure in the right side. And this is the oblique fissure. This is the minor fissure, which is transverse fissure. So this slice, it gives you this line. So these are the right and left upper lobes. If you go down, you will see you you will see branches right and left main bronchus so it means you are at the level of the near the level of the minor fissures also so any if you have an imaginary lines if any line any uh, line tissue uh, just behind this line these are the lower lobes and here we have middle lobe we have lingula here so if you go more down you will not going you are not going to see the bronchi anymore and it means that in, you are below the fissure the transverse fissure so here these are the line, lower lobes so right and left lower lobes and this is the lingula and this is the middle lobe so this is the middle lobe here the lower lobe we also have it's coronary CT angiography. It is just like ordinary CT, but with special speed. We usually, we start, we cannot assess the coronary angiograph by 16 slides. Usually use it 64 slides, but with some cardiac pulse, it should be more less than 65, for example. And if you increase the slides, 
it will give you more resolution and even the heartbeat will be a less problem for, for the scanning. And you will get uh, the uh, angiography just like you see on the conventional angiography. For example, this is the right coronary artery. And we have left main, left, left main artery, coronary artery, divided into LID, left anterior descending, and we have left circumfer uh, circumflex. So it will give you a 3D cardiac shadow. It will give you a 3D heart. So you can assess and you can change according to the, your interest and the indications. So this is the RCA, right corner artery. This is the LM, left main, this is LID. It will give branches of diagonal. And also we have circumflex that would give you uh, obtuse marginal. And the right corner, it give you acute marginal. So, as I mentioned, CT scan of the chest is essential and in many cases there are problem solving and also you can assess the heart, the, the angiography of the other weak vessels. Nowadays we are using ultrasound more and more, in, even in emergency hospital, for assessment of the line to show, to exclude, uh, for example, pneumothorax and to assess for the ground glass appearance give you B lines and C line for consolidation. So we are going to, but the problem here is this operator dependent, it depends on the exper experience of the operator. So this is main problem, but it is available easily, can be done and there no hazard of radiation. We have anterior line, we have lateral line, and we have posterior line. So, and we can if we examine in the vertical or the transverse view. For example, if you see here, this is the pleura. This is the pleura, which is ecogenic, whitish color. And this is the line below it. And these are the subcutaneous tissue and the muscles here, soft tissues. So here, if you see, this is the pleura. And there is movement of the pleura. Normally, you can see pleura sliding sign, which is normal for the line tissue. If you don't see it or lose it, it means there is some problem going with this patient. For example, here, there is loss of line sliding signs, for example, here. You will see some lines, which B lines, and some even C lines, which means consolidation. So even these findings and these concepts can be used in patients with COVID-19, patient in ICU for assess, assessment and sometimes for, uh, for follow-up of the patients. We also use this. Are we talk about is B mode? We have we have M mode. We can use it here. For example, this is normal tissue. This is a line of the pleura. This is the link, and this is the soft tissue. So it give you barcode here, and this is just like beach. This is the sand of the beach, and this is the sea. So normally you will see here just like that. But in the pneumothorax, you will lose or the, the these signs so there will be only barcoding so this means that you have you you have pneumothorax in this region and also you can assess the 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 severity of the pneumothorax by leveling in different parts of the chest we have a nuclear imaging of the chest as a part of the whole body so we have example commonly used is PETCT, which is positron emission tomography, computed tomography. It is just like CT scan. It's if you first your first look, it's just like CT scan. And this merged with other camera of the radioactive substance. So the patient will receive some radioactive substance. And commonly used in FDG is in PET CT is FDG, which is fluorodeoxyglucose, which is um just like competitive with the glucose. So any hyperactive or meta hypermetabolic or uh, uh, um, metabolic region, it will uptake the glucose and the FDG more than the other tissue. We have to know which part of the body it take uptake normally, for example, you will see in the heart and the kidneys excretion. So is there are normal physiological uptake? But for example, in this case, we have a tumor here which is hyperactive or it is uh, 
active region, which is most likely this is the tumor. But as, a fit, as you see, this is just like ordinary CT scan with some modulation. So this is the right upper lobe, and this is the right lower lobe, and this is the tumor. So positron emission tomography is unfortunately is Till now is unavailable in those, and it's very vital for assessment of the oncological patients for metastasis, and it's very sensitive for picking up early um, tumors and hyperactive or meta uh, metabolically active uh, lesions. But also, we it is sensitive, but it's not specific. We have some case, some lesions that uptake; uh, it will get uh, hyperactive. Uh, in some infections, but we have, we usually, we use SUV is standard uptake value. Uh, we use usually, if more than three, it is malignant, and below, it is usually not malignant or low grade. I will pass through uh, some of the normal cases, and now I will try to share, share my we have a program here, so I will try to share it with you. Just uh, one minute. So this, I will sh show you the cases of chest, which is which are normal. So example here, these are the CT scan. What you are going to see it in the workstation is CT scan of the chest in a mediastinal window. So we have a mediastinal window. We, are, according to our checklist, we will assess every part of the lesion. So in the mediastinal window, lung window, in the bone window, you will see all the structure here. I will try to have a laser annotation. So this, this can, for example, you will assess the aorta here. This is the arch of the aorta. And we have, this is the ascending aorta. This is the descending. This is the right and left main bone cusp. This is a pulmonary trunk, which is very crucial for pulmonary embolism, right and left branches. We, we have also esophagus here. This esophagus. We have a thoracic duct. We have a zygous vein also. A zygous vein. All these structures are very important to know the anatomy and especially for, and this is the internal memory or the internal thoracic artery. This is the vein. They are very small, but for any injury on these regions, it may make the patient very critically ill or big hematoma after getting injury for this structure by biopsy example. So we have to assist the axilla or soft tissue for any left node here, for example. You will see such nodules here. They are very small, but and they are benign looking. As I mentioned, this is the subcutaneous tissue. This is the fat inside the hilum, which is normally seen in normal lymph nodes. And this is a pectoralis major in the left side, minor. And we assess also the, all the muscles. For example, you see uh, suprascapularis, example, suprascapularis, infrascapularis. We have subscapularis. So, all the, the, the muscles can be assessed, the soft tissue can be assessed, the hilar region and the lymph nodes and the cardiac chambers and the pericardium and pericardial effusion, we'll see it here. And also we have not to forget the adrenal, it is, this is the left right adrenal gland and this is the left adrenal gland. So, and these are the pole all upper poles of the kidney. So on this liver, this is the spleen, the pancreas. And uh, we have to assess in the mediastinal window. And also, we have not to forget to assess the CT scan in a lung window as well. 
So this is for assessment of the parenchyma and the, any airway. For example, if you want to search for the pneumothorax, this is the air inside the bronchus. You will see air inside the pleural cavity, for example, here. So the lung window is essential for pneumothorax and for the interstitial lung diseases. So this example, this is the, the middle lobe, this is the lingula, and this is these are the, up, the right lower lobe, this is the right, the left lower lobe. And this is the, the cardiac silhouette, the heart shadow. So these are all are important for us to assess in different ways, and we have to know the normal structures of the lung tissue to, to, to pick up the pathologies, especially you are, you are the, the, the you, are, you will, you will be shown on the first line of the, on the hospitals and the ER and in some of the primary healthcare centers. So these are important and crucial for you to know, at least for some picking up the, uh, the diseases that need early interventions. So here I will show you some of the spots. For example, here, this is the arch. You have to know it. This is the A, Sophia Benakava, and this is the azygous, azygous vein when its arch is coming to the, uh, uh, in the brachiocephalic. This is the, the, this is the esophagus. This is the esophagus, for example. And uh, this is the left subclavian, and this is the brachiocephalic artery, and this is the left brachiocephalic vein, and right brachiocephalic vein. So these structures and are important for you to know, at least to pick up the major pathologies and to know the normal anatomy of the CT scan. So example here, this is important pulmonary trunk. This is the right, the left, sorry, this is the right. This is the right, this is the left. And this is the ascending aorta. This is the descending aorta. It's also important for dissection and injuries. So every part should be these are main structure in the CT scan that you have to know some of them at least. And any lesion in the, these are the chambers of the heart. So in your left side, so this is the right side of the patient. So here you, 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 you have the right ventricle. This is the right atrium. This is the left ventricle. This is the left atrium. So this is the descending aorta, and this is the azygous. These are structures that are important for you to know. I hope that you enjoy the lectures and you get benefit from some of the main structures. You see it in the normal radiological uh, uh, modalities, and you have not to forget to make a balance and to know the indications. And the important thing as a if you, you are going to be a doctor, and this is important to keep in mind the indications to know not to send every patient for the CT scan, for example. You have to send it for chest x for dyspnea, for cough, and if you get some problem or any pathology, you may need to, to go to, for the problem-solving modality, which most of the cases is the CT scan, but not forget, please, the indication why you send the patient to the CT scan to have some clinical notes about the patients to make the, the, the radiologist easily can diagnose and to reach the diagnosis. And thank you for listening and keep safe. Bye-bye.